Let's take a look at how the different shapes affect the paint application. I've got a bunch of my favorite brushes here, and we'll take a look at how the size, material, and shape affects the paint application. So first up, I have a Filbert in hog bristle, size eight. Now sizes are not consistent from brand to brand. A size eight could be a completely different size in another brand or another material. For instance, this is a size eight in a sable brush. And sable brushes are often smaller than filberts, uh, but as you can see, they're drastically different sizes. Filberts, I find, are kind of friendly brushes, let's say. Uh, they don't create any harsh edges. Uh, they're just really easy and user-friendly to work with. Now you can see it picks up a lot of paint and it's able to, to hold a lot of paint. I usually only put paint on let's say that last third, give or take, of the brush. And I'm using a fairly generous amount here. Now I try to hold the brush roughly where the writing is and hold it like this rather than like how I would write. That allows the brush stroke to go on the canvas more parallel to the canvas rather than using the point of the brush to move the paint around. So here we can see there is some texture from the bristles. There's quite a bit of paint and I sort of dragged it until the paint basically disappeared. Up next I have a flat brush in a 10 which is also a hog bristle. So you'll notice the flat is sort of a long rectangular shape. Compare that to the bright which is also a rectangular shape, but much shorter. A bright will give you more control, but less fluidity in the brush stroke. I often prefer a flat because they create more expressive brush strokes, I believe, but they are a little more difficult to control. So again, picking up the paint, same material, so it's holding on to a lot of paint here. Notice how the profile of the stroke is much harsher. It's more rectangular, of course, like the shape of the brush itself. Now, sometimes this might be a good thing, and other times you might prefer to have kind of that softer look without these hard edges. So again, it really depends on the effect you're going for and how obvious you want the brush strokes to be. I wanted to show you this brush, which is a hog bristle in a filbert. This is a Raphael size 6, but you can see it's quite old and quite puffy. Now usually I don't like puffy brushes like this, but I actually really enjoy this one for areas where I want to create a lot of texture and where I want to kind of have an imprecise look. Now I like these ones because they really can grab onto a lot of paint. I just want to point out with these that they are very imprecise. You can kind of see the you know, haziness, let's say, around the edges there. Uh, now, it wasn't like this when I bought it. This is just what happened over time. So it's sort of aged in a strange way, but again, it's good for some effects. And I never throw out a brush because, you know, I never know when I'm going to need it for something. Now here we have a sable brush. This is sort of a less expensive sable. It's a Mongolian sable instead of a red sable. And it is a filbert, but it's also quite puffy with age. So I'm picking up some paint, but you might notice, this is just maybe a different feel, but because the bristles are softer, it's almost like the brush is pushed by the paint rather than the brush pushing the paint. So like the paint is stiffer than the brush almost. So I'm picking up some paint. It doesn't really hold on to as much and it's a little softer. Same sort of idea here. We're creating still some texture. But if I smooth that out, it can get really soft and flat. As a comparison, here we have a synthetic flat in a size 8. 
So it's quite precise, quite sharp edged. So it's not going to pick up as much paint usually, and it should give a very precise look there, um, but less texture than the bristle brushes. Now, one brush I don't use a lot is a round brush, and it's really kind of just what it sounds like. It's, it's round all the way through, and it doesn't hold on to a lot of paint or create a really beautiful brush stroke, in my opinion. So I don't really use it very often, but it can be good sort of for a line. You know, if you're kind of maybe painting a few lines here, but I find these ones, for my purposes, less effective. Here we have a fan brush in a hog bristle. I also have a fan brush in a sable, and it is very soft. This one's quite flexible, quite soft. This one here is stiffer and with more spring to it. So fan brushes are usually used to kind of smooth out the brush strokes. Personally, with the long bristles of the fan brush and having it be sable, I find it's so soft that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't do a whole lot and I almost never use this one. But let's see how it applies paint. So picking up some paint. And see how it doesn't really hold on to a lot of paint. Again, fan brushes are not something that I use very often, the round ones and the fan. Uh, I prefer flats and filberts, but so much of this is just personal preference. One thing I wanted to note is the size of the brush and how useful it can be. So this is a 12 in a hog bristle. The brand is HJ Series 10, and I actually really like these brushes because I find they wear well. I like the spring of the bristles and they're not terribly expensive. Size 12 is about as big as I'll go because it just takes up so much paint. So really I need to get a lot of paint on here to kind of use it appropriately and the brush itself soaks up a lot of paint and mineral spirits. This is great if you want to paint very large expressive areas, uh, which sometimes I do. So I do really enjoy this brush. And lastly, let's take a look at this bright. So the profile will be very similar to a flat, but it is much less flexible because the bristles aren't as long. So still picking up quite a bit of paint, but there's very little flex here. Partly that's because of the age of the brush, but also because there just isn't much length to the bristles. So this one won't hold quite as much paint, but it creates very much a similar profile to the flat brushes. It just doesn't feel as soft and as expressive, um, but it's much more controllable in a sense because the bristles aren't moving around a lot. So I find a filbert and a bright to be the most user-friendly of brushes. And myself, I usually prefer filberts and flats because flats just have that bit of extra length uh, that helps to create an expressive, beautiful brush stroke. Visit NicoleSleethAtelier.com for art courses, demos, and more.